This is the third in a little mini series that I'm making on hypergeometric series. So let's recall what a hypergeometric series is, see what we've done so far, and then the goal for today's video is to look at a couple of special cases of this object. So first of all, let's recall this rising factorial. So a n is a times a plus one times a plus two all the way up to a plus n minus one. So this is a rising product of n terms starting at a, where a is any complex number. So armed with that, we can define our ordinary hypergeometric function or series 2f1 a, b, c, z, where z has some restrictions on it. It may not be a negative integer as the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of the rising factorial a n b n over c n n factorial z to the n. Now in some previous videos, we looked at the relationship to two elliptic integrals, e k and k k. I'll let you guys check out those if you'd like to. Okay, so here, like I said before, we're gonna look at some special cases, and this is gonna be a little bit exploratory. Let's see what collapse we get if we look at the hypergeometric function f, 2f1 a b b z. So in other words, the b and the c entry are the same here. Now, after reducing this, we'll look at actually some special cases of just this as well. Okay, so using our definition over there, we can rewrite this as the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of the rising factorial a n and then the b n and the c n will cancel given that b and c are the same. So this will be over n factorial times z to the n. Okay, now let's see where we can go from there. So this is gonna be the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of a times a plus one all the way up to a plus n minus one over n factorial times z to the n. Now, looking at this, this has almost the shape of a binomial coefficient. It's just a binomial coefficient has a falling product, whereas this has a rising product. I guess you could write this as a falling product having to do with n, but that's a little bit messy. So how could we write this as a falling product starting at a? Well, the way we could do it is multiply each of these terms by minus one. But if we do that, we have to also multiply everything else by minus one an equal amount of times. So let's count up how many terms we have. We have n terms there because this is a rising factorial. So if I multiply each of these by minus one, I have to include a minus one to the n inside this sum. So that's gonna give me the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of minus one to the n, but I'm gonna combine that with my minus z to the n at the end. So I'll just group those together. And then I'll be left with minus a times minus a minus one all the way down to minus a minus n plus one. And then this is all happening over n factorial. So now let's notice that this is a falling product in the numerator of n terms starting at minus a, and then we've got an n factorial in the denominator, but that's exactly a binomial coefficient. So what we have here is the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of the binomial coefficient minus a choose n, and then we have minus z to the n. But then recalling the binomial expansion formula, that's exactly one minus z to the minus a power. Okay, so let's bring that up here. We have this is one minus z to the minus a power. And then let's quickly look at a couple of special cases of this. So we just got done forming this special case of our ordinary hypergeometric function. Now some even more special cases of this special case itself can be gotten by choosing values of a. So notice if we choose a to be minus half, then we've got a minus half power that is negated, so a half power. So in other words, a square root. So in other words, this object becomes the square root of one minus z. 
And then furthermore, if we have a minus one here, then negating it will have a plus one. And then composing that with one minus z, we'll see that we get just z. And that's because if we were to write all of this out, this would be one minus one minus z to the power of minus negative one, or in other words, to the power of one. But again, that just collapses to z. Okay, so now let's look at another one of these. For our last example, we'll look at the special case where we first multiply by z, and then we have a equal to half, b equal to one, c equal to three halves, and we've replaced z with minus z squared. So let's see what we get for this using the definition of our hypergeometric function. So this is gonna be our sum as n goes from zero up to infinity. I have half n in the numerator, then I have the rising factorial of one with n terms, but that becomes n factorial as we saw in a previous video. And then I have the rising factorial three halves n and n factorial in the denominator. And then finally, because of this minus sign, I'll have a minus one to the n here, and then I'll have a z to the two n plus one. It's to the two n because of this z squared, and then we have the plus one because of this z out here. Okay, so that's starting to look good. Now let's do some simplification, starting with the fact that we can cancel this n factorial with this n factorial. Then let's write out these rising factorials via their definition. So here we'll have the sum, n is going from zero up to infinity. We have our alternating bit, so minus one to the n. And then here we'll have a half, times three halves times five halves. Let's see, where will that end? That will end at half plus n minus one. Okay, now let's look at the denominator. So the denominator will start at three halves times five halves, which is one more. And then I'll put the next to last term here. The next to last term will be this half plus n minus one. And then my last term will be three halves plus n minus one. Okay, and then I finally have a z to the two n plus one. But now a bunch of stuff cancels. Notice the three halves here in the denominator cancels with this three halves. This five halves in the denominator cancels with this five halves. And then finally, this half plus n minus one will cancel with this half plus n minus one. And then we're left with this thing in the denominator and this thing in the numerator. We can bring that two down though. But before we do that, let's notice that this guy simplifies fairly easily to n plus half. Okay, so now when we bring this half down to the denominator, it'll be a two. That'll leave us with two n plus one in the denominator. We have a two n plus one in the exponent, so that's nice. So we can summarize that by rewriting this whole thing as the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity, minus one to the n, and then z to the two n plus one over 2n plus 1. But now let's notice that the denominator is the same thing as the exponent in the numerator. So this looks like it's been integrated. So this is in fact the antiderivative of the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of minus 1 to the n, z to the 2n dz. So I think that's pretty clear because what's going on here is we add 1 to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. And we can exchange this order of summation and integration because all of the values of z that are appropriate here have modulus less than one, and thus we have absolute convergence. That's sort of by the definition of the where this thing converges. Okay, good. So now we can just use standard fact about geometric series to add this up. So this is gonna be, we still have the antiderivative and then this is a geometric series with common ratio of minus z squared, giving us one over one plus z squared dz. Finally, taking the antiderivative, we get the inverse tangent or the arctan of z. Okay, so that's another special case of this.
Okay, so before we end this, I'll leave you guys a couple of homework problems where you can do similar calculations to get at some other special cases. So I'll leave you with a couple of homework exercises to get used to doing these types of calculations. So the first is to show that the log of one minus z is z times 2f1112z. Then the second is to show that the arc sine of z is z times 2f1, and then you'll have to find the entries here. So what's this, what's this, what's this, and then z squared. So I think this is a nice little exploratory exercise, and that's a good place to stop.